Hi everyone and welcome back to Planting for Wildlife. I'm really excited to be looking at some more David Austin or English roses with you today. About a month ago I released a video called Why I Love David Austin Roses and to be honest I was really blown away with all of the comments I received on the video so thank you so much for anyone who commented or watched that video. It's clear there's so many people out there who love these roses as much as I do and it was really nice to see the varieties that everyone else is growing as well, including some of the discontinued varieties like Brother Cadvel and Jude the Obscure. In this garden I've actually planted five new roses over the last few weeks that have gone into a newly dug bed that will eventually be next to the patio. But why are David Austin roses or English roses so special? For me it's all about the scent and in this video I'm going to look at the five different types of scent that an English rose can have including old rose, tea, myrrh, musk and fruit. Now one word of warning is that some of the roses I'm going to feature are not classed as pollinator friendly by David Austin. That normally means that they're heavily petaled varieties and that the petals come in and obscure the scent of the flower from access from pollinators. You can tell which ones are pollinator friendly though using either the website or the handbook. Each rose has a series of symbols and one of those symbols is a bee for attracting bees. Having said that, just because a rose is not good at attracting pollinators itself doesn't mean don't have it in your garden. I would just think about pairing it with another pollinator friendly plant and I always think something like a salvia caradonna works really nicely with the kind of deep purple vertical spikes and that deep purple colour can go really nicely with either a white rose, a yellow rose or a pink rose which pretty much covers the whole of the David Austin range. Before we get into looking at these beautiful plants, I wanted to talk a little bit about the body's sense of smell. Your sense of smell is closely linked with memory, probably more than any of the other senses. And for me, just smelling a rose can really take you back to that beautiful summer's day. Information from your body's senses are processed through something called the thalamus, which is a bit like your body's information relay station. Except from smell, which actually bypasses this stage, going straight to the brain smell center, known as the olfactory bulb. The olfactory bulb then receives this information about smell and sends it straight to the brain. This might explain why the smell of something can immediately trigger a detailed memory or even an intense emotion. Okay, back to some plants now. The strength of a rose can be influenced by a number of different factors. Warm, moist weather normally results in more fragrance. And interestingly, it's actually the weather the day before that impacts how a rose smells, not the weather at the point of smelling the rose. That's something I definitely didn't realize before I researched this video. Roses should also smell stronger in the morning as some of the chemicals they use to generate that smell are used up throughout the day. Looking at the different types of scent of an English rose, I'll start with Old Rose, which is that traditional rose smell, a bit like rose water or Turkish Delight. I personally adore this scent, and one of the most famous David Austin roses with Old Rose scent, and one of the strongest, is called Getru Jekyll, named after the English horticulturalist who designed over 400 gardens from the late 1800s to 1900s, and lives at Munstead Wood, which is a name some of you might be familiar with. My absolute favourite English rose with old rose scent though is called Desdemona and it's one that I have in this garden in a large pot. This rose is as pure white as David Austin roses get, although the buds have a little bit of pink to them before they open, which I think is really nice. The scent is old rose, but with quite a heavy citrus note in there as well. It's really stunning. The one that I have in this garden, I wouldn't say is the most vigorous rose I have. Certainly some of the yellow roses like Lady of Shalott are a lot more vigorous and it has been attacked by caterpillars before. Obviously I don't spray anything in this garden, but hopefully by inviting as many birds into the garden as I possibly can, they can help out eating any caterpillars or other insects on the plants. Desdemona hasn't been given the pollinator friendly status by David Austin, although the petals do open up nicely, exposing the stamen as the flowers age. A little bit like the pink rose Septodile, which actually has been given the pollinator friendly status by David Austin. I'll have to keep an eye on it this year to see if I do see any bees in it. Lastly, one more rose with old rose scent is the very heavily petaled pink rose James Galloway. 
Tea is another type of scent of English roses, and some of these varieties, such as Grace, really do smell like a good English breakfast tea. The tea scent, though, actually arose from the hybridization of the China roses with a rose called Rosa Gigantea, which originated in the northeast of India and was said to smell like a freshly opened packet of Chinese tea. There's a lot of variation though in the tea scents, a little bit like Roald Dahl, which I have in this garden and combines the tea notes with fruity notes. It's also a really strong grower. Pretty much all of the yellow English roses have some form of tea scent though. One really nice example is Dame Judy Dench, which is said by David Austin to have a light tea scent, but whenever I've seen the rose at the RHS Garden, Wisley in Surrey, UK, it's always smelt really nice. For a climbing option, there's Pilgrim, which combines tea with the scent of myrrh, which brings us nicely on to the next scent, myrrh. The myrrh scent is almost unique to English roses and was first introduced with the original David Austin rose, Constant Spry, which is available both as a shrub rose and as a climber. The scent is closely linked with sweet anise, which is a bit like fennel, giving that licorice type smell. In terms of my favourite varieties of rose with myrrh scent, I have Bascabel in this garden, which is currently in a pot, but it's definitely vigorous enough to put in a mixed border if you wanted to. The scent really is beautiful, but I think the thing I love most about this variety is the coral pink colour and the way that can combine with greens or with dark purples. Although, I have to admit, last year I pretty much just put the pot outside my patio door so it didn't look its best. Another shrub rose with myrrh scent is the more recently released Bring Me Sunshine. Or, if you want a climbing rose, Bathsheba looks like a really beautiful colour, although it's not one I've seen in the flesh. Onto the musk scent that resembles the musk used in old perfumes. It's a rich smell that can be both sweet and spicy. And unlike the other scents of English roses, the scent of musk is actually produced by the stamens rather than the petals. Musk is normally found in rambling roses and rarely on the shrub roses. I'm actually thinking of buying a musk scented rambling rose to cover the base of a large leggy holly tree I have on the right hand side of the garden. Hopefully the rambling rose can cover the base but then also grow up into the tree which I think could look really nice. Top of the list is a variety called Paul's Himalayan Musk which has pale pink flowers which are pollinator friendly and grows to a huge 12 meters tall so that can actually grow right up into the tree and could look really nice. Another variety that is a bit smaller up to 7 meters tall is called Rambling Rector which has semi double flowers that start off cream and then go to white. One really nice shrub rose with musk scent is called Tottering by Gently. It has single canary yellow flowers which are pollinator friendly and it's one that I covered on my previous David Austin video. I'll leave a link at the end of this one. Finally, onto fruit scented roses. Roses come from the same botanic family called Rosa C as a lot of the fruit we eat, such as peaches, raspberries and apples. So it's not surprising that a lot of roses actually have fruity notes within the scent. Some of the fruity notes of English roses have been bred from the China roses and their descendants. One rose in particular, called Rose Wichurana, has an apple scent to it, and that rose, although no longer stocked by David Austin, was used to breed a climbing rose called Aloha. And Rose Aloha has then further been used to breed a lot of the more vigorous English roses. In terms of my favourite varieties with fruity notes, as I mentioned earlier, I have Desdemona with that combination of old rose and citrus fruit notes. I also have Roald Dahl, which is really strong grow and can be put into a mixed border, which is a tea fruity combination. I don't have any roses in the garden specifically noted as fruity from David Austin, but I am really excited to just be adding two new roses to the rose bed called Danahue, and this is a new variety from David Austin out this year, noted as fruity, and I'll definitely cover that in a later video. One more variety, very popular, which does have fruity notes, is Gabriel Oak. That's covered all five different types of scent of an English rose, including old rose, tea, myrrh, musk, and fruit. It's definitely worth noting that all of these rose varieties smell quite different, even if they're noted on the David Austin website or in the handbook as having the same type of scent. So it's definitely worth trying to visit a garden to see the rose, see how it grows, see how vigorous it is, and also obviously smell the rose too uh, before committing to a purchase. Having said that, that's a rule I just broke with my recent purchases for our rose bed here, so I can't talk too much. 
I hope you've enjoyed the video and I'd love to know in the comment section below which roses you love the scent of the most. If you haven't seen my previous video, Why I Love David Austin Roses, please also check that out. I'm also on Instagram, it's mjdearman underscore photography, so drop me a follow there. I promise to post lots of rose content through the summer once they're all in bloom. Until next time, enjoy the wildlife in your garden.